<laughs> Slow food imagines a world where the food that we eat is good for us. It's good for the farmers. It's good for the workers. And it's good for the planet. Everybody indulge me for just a moment and close your eyes. No peeking. I see you peeking up there. <laughs> okay. Imagine Savannah having a food hub, a distribution center that houses locally grown farm goods for easy distribution to area schools, stores, restaurants, and even consumers. Now imagine for a moment, what would this food hub look like? Perhaps it's an underutilized his historic space with tall ceilings, maybe even reminiscent of the city market that once stood in Ellis Square. Now open your eyes. Can you see it? Why is buying local and fresh and organic important? Does the word organic conjure up visions of dollar signs in your head? <laughs> Let me explain the true cost. Today's children are expected to live shorter lives than that of their parents. The last time that happened was in the early 1800s. You would think that in the last 200 years we had progressed in the right direction. But today's emphasis is on the quantity of food and not the quality. And this has largely contributed to the obesity epidemic that we're facing currently in our nation. Instead of concentrating on the types of nutrients and the nutritional density of food, our emphasis has gone on quick and cheaply produced food. Locally grown organic food is extremely nutritionally dense. It's packed full of vitamins and minerals, than, and much more so than its counterparts that you find in your grocery store today. Organic produce contains zero preservatives and has not been alter altered genetically in a lab to be a brighter shade of red or an unnatural shade of red. Plus, it just tastes better, y'all. <laughs> um, have you ever taken a bite into an uh, organic apple and really had that really good sweet taste? Now try to take a bite out of a conventionally grown apple that's been sprayed. Just imagine taking a, a can of Raid and spraying that apple and then taking a bite. You don't want to do that. Yuck. <laughs> but an organic apple has not been altered and has not been sprayed and it tastes delicious, like nature meant it to be. Slow food is an idea, a way of living, a way of eating. It's a global grassroots movement with tens of thousands of members worldwide. They're linking the pleasure of food with a commitment to their community and also to the environment. So how do we bring that here to Savannah is the core message. How do we change our food landscape here in Savannah and support our local economy through food and our food choices? Let's keep our dollars here, folks. Jamie Oliver, who, if you don't know, does everybody know Jamie Oliver? He's the founder of a Food Revolution, and he's also a chef, and he won an award for his TED speech in 2010. And in his speech, he recognized three major pathways to help integrate healthy food into America. Here at Slow Food, we see these pathways to improvement as home, school, and community. And this makes our Savannah Food Hub. Knowledge and experience must be shared and taught through families and businesses in the community if we ever want to have this thriving food system and improve our health. The first point in our triangle in Savannah Food Hub is home. Families just aren't cooking anymore. They're not teaching their children to cook, and they're not sitting down for a shared meal. They're not buying seasonally 
mass-produced foods or seasonal foods in the grocery store, and they're not sharing their meals with their neighbors and their friends. Of course, this doesn't apply to everyone, but we're losing that traditional art of cooking and passing down recipes from our grandparents. How do we encourage families to sit down at the table and, and share a meal with each other? How can we preserve our Southern heritage and pass this along to the next generation? The second part is school. Food education is the most important aspect of this plan. School is the place that's supposed to nourish our children and help them grow not only mentally but physically, and they're not learning about food. How many of you have children in this audience? Raise your hand. Awesome. Or you're an aunt or uncle. <laughs> Great. I'm a mom, and my mom is here today. <laughs> and I, I strive all the time to teach my son southern, about Southern Heritage Foods and about where food comes from, why it's important to buy from a local farm, and what fruits and vegetables are grown seasonally, and what's the best choice that he can make. And his name is Caden, by the way, and he's seven. <laughs> So many children don't get this opportunity to learn these things. And they, they're they not sure where salsa, uh, or they think that salsa was grown from a tree or that milk came from the store. So I want to change that, and I want to give kids the opportunity and give, a f- give them a fighting chance against the battle against lifestyle disease. Food education is necessary for adults as well as kids. But schools are the best place to start. We can grow the next generation of informed people who can make the best choice and the healthiest choice. And the final point on our local Savannah Food Hub is community. A commitment for businesses and local consumers to buy from local farms or directly from the farm. Go to the farmer's market and buy your goods, or take a trip and visit your local farms, which are 30 to 45 minutes away, some closer, some a little farther. What if we could find ways to easily transport goods in a more sustainable way, or a way to connect farmers to chefs and restaurants, perhaps through that local food hub that I mentioned before? Local food isn't just about health and taste, though. It's about our local economy and spending our dollars here. It's about culture, and it's about community. Let's ask ourselves some tough questions. How do we support local farmers? How do we preserve our heritage foods? How do we teach the next generation of producers, parents, and policymakers? Slow food is built on the idea, (laughs) this was at the National Congress in Kentucky, (laughs) awesome pink snails. (laughs) Slow food's built on the idea that people see each other differently through the power of a shared meal, that the pleasure and power of a shared meal is the route to social change and the path that connects all of us to each other and to our environment. The missing link is taste education, rediscovering the joy of really good food and improving access to fresh foods. Have you ever had home-baked bread fresh from the oven or picked salad greens right from a garden and eaten them right then? Have you had a seasonal local tomato? There's nothing better than those things. The taste and nutritional value that comes from those foods should be available to everyone. Everybody know what this is? (laughs) Vidalia onion. Uh, We're known for Vidalia onions here in Georgia. And they're delicious, and I love to cook with them. At Slow Food Savannah, we are going to start peeling back the layers of our onion. 
I'm trying not to cry. (laughs) 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 We need to return to the roots of our southern heritage and preserve our local food system. (coughs) Prince Charles, of all people, (laughs) said this, The slow food movement is about celebrating the culture of food and sharing the extraordinary knowledge developed over millennia of the traditions involved with quality food production. Join us at Slow Food Savannah, for we believe that food is a universal right, or it's a common language, and it's a universal right. Also, Sunday night at 6 o'clock, we're showing our first film, and it's called Grow, and it's featuring local farmers right here from Georgia. So everyone, please try to attend and join Slow Food Savannah in this fight. Thank you.